everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, next video in the series about the VCDX program. Um, my name is Johan, and together with me is my colleague Jeffrey. Hi, my name is uh, Jeffrey Kusses. VCDX 238. 252. And uh, what we would like to explain to you today is basically how uh, we would approach um, an architecture. And there are a couple of different types of architectures. What we're going to talk about today is the conceptual architecture. So basically we have a project goal, and the project goal is to deliver a scalable and standardized SDDC. And what we already wrote down here are a couple of requirements, a constraint, an assumption, and a risk. So if we start with the requirements, uh, we have um, a customer that has a requirement for, in case of a migration, a migration downtime of less than 60 minutes, 60 minutes. We have, and that's a functional requirement. We have a non-functional requirement that we have, we, we need to have a unified uh, management environment. So we have, yeah, we, we need a unified uh, management plane. Uh, we have a constraint, so we have limited data center capa uh, capacity. So, yeah, we have limitations in terms of uh, scaling out. What we are assuming is that there's a 40% growth expected in the next 12 months. And this assumption with this constraint automatically um, creates this risk, which says that, well, we have a false assumption. The impact of these two is that we are unable to grow uh, based on uh, the expected growth and the limited DC capacity. So Jeffrey, how would we uh, take these elements of the, the, the conceptual design and what, what, how are we, uh, should we approach the conceptual design in this case? Yeah, so my first approach is always to, to kind of convert this into a, a, an architecture view, so a uh, sort of a conceptual diagram. Um, well, and, and you know, this is not the most elaborate uh, design scenario, so bear with us, but you know, our goal is to, uh, to well, take you uh, through um, well, how you would translate a set of requirements, constraints, and assumptions into, uh, into a conceptual design. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, you already mentioned, I think the biggest, uh, the biggest risk here is um, 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 well, making sure that we are able to support the business in their growth ambitions. There's a 40% growth, um, which means that you know, if, the, if the actual growth exceeds that 40%, uh, then we won't be able to, uh, to accommodate because we don't have any capacity in the data center. Yeah. So as an architect, that's something you have to deal with. So there are all kinds of options going to... Uh, public data center, commercial data center, uh, maybe rebuilding the physical facility, whatever. Um, we're going to work on the, on the assumption that we're going to uh, extend to the cloud in this case. Um, and what's important in the conceptual design is that it's, it's not about the technology or the products or whatever, it's, it's about the concepts. So if we take a look at these, well, at the project goal and these uh, set of requirements and, and assumptions, um, yeah, let, let's start with a customer data center. And well, we're, ba we're working on, a pro on, the, uh, on the premise that we're going to extend to a cloud service. So we are going to uh, include a cloud infrastructure. And it's, it's important when talking about cloud infrastructure uh, within a conceptual design that we're not naming specific uh, uh, cloud service providers or, or technologies within cloud. We're just talking about cloud and infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, and, and the same on, uh, on the, well, the data center resources. We have software-defined storage and we have software-defined compute because we're delivering a software-defined data center. Yeah. Um, our goal is to create a consistent infrastructure so, um, and standardized. So we're going to have the same building blocks on the other side, software-defined storage and software-defined compute. And from a con conceptual perspective, the software-defined network will be stretched across these through infrastructures. So that's the SDN layer because we're going to, well, deliver workload mobility. We need to extend our data center. So that means the workloads need to be able to be moved to the cloud and back. Yeah, and we, one of the requirements was to have a unified management environment, and this is essential <coughs> to, to achieve that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah kind yeah. of is, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, um, yeah, of course, this is the, the environment where all the virtual machines are running. And 
what we need on top is, you already mentioned it, a consistent management plane. Um, you know, by, by default, you know, each side is, is isolated. It's, you can basically see these as two availability zones. And, but we need to meet that requirement of creating a unified uh, management environment. So we are going to have to make sure that our management planes are connected. So I'm just going to visualize this by you know, creating a, a two-pointed arrow in that yeah. direction. So, um, but do we meet all the requirements of you know, extending the data center or the workloads across the, uh, across the site to the, uh, to the cloud infrastructure? Well, one of the functionals was <coughs> uh, to have a migration downtime of less than 60 minutes. Cool, so we need something there. Absolutely. Because, um, well, if you need to shut down your machines, might copy them over to a cloud, and, and boot them up, we're not going to make that 60 minutes, I guess. So what we kind of need is a solution that creates an abstraction layer um, across these two infrastructures. So we're going to call that infrastructure hybridity. And what we're basically going to do is, um, well, we're going to deliver a cloud migration solution. Migration. Um, that's going to link to this side and to your cloud infrastructure. And that is a solution that will enable us to bulk migrate all these workloads. Uh, and it is, it is a, a functionality in it that you can do the whole migration part in the background and decide on a cutover moment during a service window. And given that all the data is already replicated, you know, the failover will be within, within a minute or so. Right. So, um, so that, that gives us uh, an, a perfect uh, answer to the first requirement, migration downtime of le less than 60 seconds. So we have a unified management environment because we are looking at uh, a, a unified management plane. So because of the limited data center capacity and the 40% growth that is expected, uh, the assumption that we have and the risk that we have so that the, the impact is that we're unable to grow, we mitigated that risk uh, by adding a cloud infrastructure that has unlimited um, uh, scalability options. So, um, yeah, I, I think this is a perfect example of how yeah. conceptual, conceptual design should look like, right? And so, again, it's not too elaborate. It's, you know, just, just uh, fit for purpose to make sure that you understand the reasoning behind translating an assumption into a risk given a certain constraint. So, yeah. Awesome. Cool. I hope this helps. Okay. Um, awesome. So, uh, Jeffrey, thanks for, for explaining how the conceptual architecture works. Um, you, thanks for watching. Uh, in the next video, we'll explain um, the logical architecture. So that's the second phase within your project. Um, for now, thanks for watching. See you next time.